Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, you guys are wonderful. Hey, 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 calm down. Calm down. I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. Don't worry. And the best of them all, I'm here to bring you guys your G Minio content. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, you lovely individuals out there? Welcome back to another G Minio video. I'm your host, Paul, the one and only, and today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite games of all time. Now, if you've seen our recent videos on the channel, you probably could have guessed that I am yet another victim to Riot Games and the torturous device they created in order to bring suffering and, and pain and chaos to humanity. That's right, I'm talking about League of Legends. And speaking of victims, League of Legends has many, many playable champions which are very unique from one another in their design and their playstyle. Some are kings, some are demons, and some just went through the toughest of times. And so in honor of all of those unfortunate souls, I'm here today to bring you guys the top five champions in League of Legends with the saddest lore. Now before we get started with the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And before we hop onto the list, there are some honorable mentions that didn't make it to the top five, in my humble opinion, but I'm gonna have them on the screen here. They all have pretty sad stories in and of itself, so make sure you go check out their backstory and their lore on the League of Legends webpage. All right, now, so I got my, my water, I got my, my sleeve to wipe my tears, and I have uh, my support animal right Yay. here. So with that being said, let's get into it. And to kick off the list at number five, this is actually gonna be one of the most recent champions released in the game, and that's gonna be Rel. And so in game, whether you love her or hate her, you gotta admit Rel is one of the toughest champions out there, and with all that power comes a pretty sad backstory. Born with a very unique magical power to manipulate metal, Rel was sent far away to a very secret academy by her parents who were looking to exploit her talents. In the academy, Rel was taught by a very pale, mysterious woman to hone her combat skills and to learn to control her magical abilities in hopes that one day she would be the greatest soldier the Noxus Empire has ever known. When Rel was eight, she was forced to battle other students and after each victory, a magic sigil would be painfully grafted into her arm, amplifying her magical powers. And likewise, after every victory, she never saw that student again. And at the age of 16, Rel discovered the horrifying truth behind our academy's training program. Every student that Rel defeated in combat had their magic forcefully extracted from them and placed into the sigils covering Rel's body, leaving the students nothing more than emotionless puppets devoid of their humanity. And to make matters worse, the pale mysterious lady who oversaw all this turned out to be Rel's own mother in disguise. Rel had enough and in rage, she crushed all those around her and brought the academy to the ground. She managed to free the other students and escape, but Noxus sent out soldiers to catch and exterminate every one of the surviving students in hope to erase any proof that this twisted program existed. And Rel, well, you know, now she's branded as one of the most dangerous criminals to the Empire and is constantly being hunted. Now Rel's backstory is sad enough as it is a story of betrayal, torture, and pain, but it becomes exponentially sadder when you realize that Rel is still just a kid. She's only 16 years old and she's deemed as one of the most wanted criminals, an outlaw, a murderer, honestly truly a victim of the greed and evil of humanity. And coming in at number four, we have Trundle. And now for this one, we need to go back in time before Trundle's rework and take a look at his old lore. Hidden away from most of the world, trolls live in the murky darkness in their cannibalistic and barbaric ways. And although trolls were hated by most, a certain tribe of trolls known as the Rugost were considerably more gentle than other tribes. One day, the Rugost gets a visit from a twisted necromancer known as Hakalin the Bonecrafter. And although the Rugost managed to drive away the foe, the evil necromancer left a curse which afflicted the trolls with an everlasting leprous disease. The trolls would have their flesh constantly rotting away, only barely kept alive by their natural ability to regenerate. The Rugas were left to be stuck forever in this painful, rotting state 
until a very special troll named Trundle was born. Trundle possessed a regenerative ability far surpassing any troll before him to the point where the disease barely took any visible effect on his body. A Rugoth shaman learned that he could magically bind the curse of the entire tribe to a single troll provided that the individual could bear the weight of it all, and that individual was Trundle. Trundle became the sacrifice for the sake of his tribe and took the curse in a baptism of searing agony. And as a result, Trundle became a horrifying creature whose flesh is constantly rotting off his body only for it to be regrown, stuck in this torturous, never-ending cycle. You know, I always hated playing against Trundle in the top lane, but after hearing this story, honestly, next time I play against him, I might just, you know, run it down and feed him a kill or two just because, you know, as a reward for his worthy sacrifice. Number three on the list, we have Skarner. Now, Skarner belonged to an ancient race of noble creatures known as the Bracken, and each of these creatures were a host to a single magical crystal which retained the memories, hopes, and dreams of all those who came before it. These crystals were the treasures of this noble race, and each Bracken would bury the crystal in death so that the younger generations would find and inherit them to continue on the custom. Over time, the mortal races began to battle and kill each other in war and conquest. The Bracken, however, disinterested in the conflicts of the mortal, burrowed underground and hibernated. Skarner was in a deep sleep when he was suddenly awakened by the screams of his brethren. The mortals came with fire and metal to exterminate the Bracken and steal away their precious crystals. Skarner managed to escape the slaughter but ended up being the sole survivor of his entire race. Skarner spends his days wandering the lands in hopes to find the remnants of his brethren's crystals, but every time he listens for any faint cries of his kin, he is met with utter emptiness. Hard to feel bad for something that looks like a giant monster scorpion, but Skarner's backstory of being the sole survivor of a genocide is honestly something that's gonna pull the heartstrings every single time. Now coming in at number 2, we have Oriana. Daughter of a master craftsman, Oriana and her father ran a modest workshop in the town of Piltover, specializing in crafting artificial limbs. And one day a chemical line was ruptured in the undercity of Zone, releasing poisonous gas all over the city. Determined to help the victims despite going against her father's wishes, Oriana snuck away at night to repair the damages done to Zone. Sacrificing her own mask to save a dying child, Oriana fell ill to the poisonous gas which began destroying her organs one by one. Despite there being no hope for his daughter, the master craftsman spent countless sleepless nights creating artificial organs for his dying daughter. Piece by piece, Oriana's body became less human and more artificial, and her memory soon began to follow. One day, however, her father had dire chest pains and was on his deathbed. Determined to save her father, Oriana did everything she could to find a way to give her father a new healthy heart. However, when all options were depleted, Oriana made one last attempt to save her father by giving him her own human heart, the very last of her humanity. Although her father was saved, Oriana became nothing more than a living figurine, a lady of clockwork, a wandering doll with no home, no family, and no memories. You know, despite being known for having one of the most saddest stories, Oriana is also known for having one of the most terrifying skins. I mean, just look at that. And to finish it off at the top of the list, we have number one, and that's gonna be Amumu the Sad Mummy. Now, in the world of League, Amumu is a myth, a, a folk tale, a living legend. There are many different tales of how this creature came to be, but one of them definitely takes the cake for being the saddest of them all. Initially the youngest child of the first great ruling family of Shurima, Amumu along with his family was victim to a disease that corrupted the flesh, therefore confining him to live his days inside his chamber. However, he befriended a servant girl who heard him crying through his chamber door, and that girl would come frequently to bring Amumu stories of her grandmother's magical powers. Eventually, Amumu's family all died of the disease, leaving Amumu all alone. Saddened by the fact that he had to bear this truth by himself, the servant girl unlocked the chamber door and ran inside to hug and comfort Amumu. 
But as soon as Amumu touched the girl, his disease spread onto her as well, eventually leading to her death. The servant girl's grandmother cast a curse on Amumu for being responsible for the death of her granddaughter and trapped Amumu in his moment of suffering for all eternity. Now Amumu takes the cake for being the saddest of them all because Amumu was literally stripped away of his childhood, his health, and even his humanity ever since he was little. His only ray of light in his dark world was the unexpected friendship of the servant girl. And when his family was stripped away, he reached out to his only source of comfort only for it to be stripped away right there in front of him as well. The feeling of sadness, guilt, and loneliness is one Amumu will have to carry with him forever as he wanders the world alone. It's so sad, I can't do this video anymore. Amumu! But that's gonna wrap it up for this list of top five League of Legends champions with the saddest lore. Honestly, I gotta wrap up this video before I start crying again, I swear. But with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below who do you think has the saddest backstory of all of League of Legends? Maybe even all of video game history? Let me know down there in the comments. It's been your boy Paul, the best host of them all. Oh, that kind of rhymed, honestly. Ooh. But I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And until I see you again, remember, game it till you make it. Bye, guys.